Yo, 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 what's good, my people? It is your boy, Michael Ogunjobi, Mr. No Days Off himself, and welcome to Mindset, Fitness, and Health. Look at where I am, guys. Where are we? Where are we? Ah! <laughs> Look at this beautiful house here. It's a secret location, guys. I've come down here, guys, to see my boy. Um, you're going to see him in a minute. His name is um, Sir Michael O on IG. If you don't know him, you need to know him. You need to get to know him and follow him. Guys, listen, I told you before on my IG that this is Mindset, Fitness and Health. So I'm going to be bringing you guys everything that you guys need in, in order to, to, to live a happy life, guys. In order to be the best that you can be. And that includes wealth, guys. That includes wealth. And it all starts up here. So, Michael is one of the guys that I've known for quite a while. He's a young guy, as you can see, he's quite successful. And I wanted to delve into his mind, basically, guys, to see what got him to where he is right now. And where, what actions he took and what sort of thinking it took to be able to get to where he is. Because he's very young, guys, as you will see. And guys, you know what? Let me stop talking. Let's just get to it. Let's go see him right now. Let's go. Beautiful surroundings here, guys. Look at this. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Right, guys, let's see. Let's make sure he's in. I did tell him I was coming, so hopefully he's in. Let's see. Oi! Hey, the man himself! My guy! Come on, <laughs> Mr. Bro. Michael O! Mr. Worldwide! What's going Good on, to see man? You, bro? Say hello to the people, man. What's going on, people? This Welcome. Is, Welcome. This is the guy, man. Sir Michael O, man. You know what I mean? Listen, come on in, man. Thank come you, on, man. man. Appreciate, 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 appreciate you giving us your time, man. You know? You know, this is what we do, man. Yeah. You How you been, bro? I'm living. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that, bro. I'm living, I'm living, I'm healthy. We're growing. 100%. You, know what I'm saying? you can see that, you can see yeah, that, my brother. Bro. But I'll take the shoes off. As I said, bro, I appreciate you doing this, man. Um, man. I've, as I've given the guys a quick little intro, I told them, look, they need to go and follow this guy. Uh -huh. So we wanted to come and pick your brain, my brother. Alright. Because all of this, I know it's not by accident. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, a yeah. mindset that you have to, to develop. I mean, we've had conversations before anyway, so but I just wanted to share it with the people and be able to give that to everybody, you know? Just, let's get it. Let's, let's do it, man. Come have a drink of us. All right, let's go, man. Let's go. Yeah, Mikey Man is a beautiful place. Thank you, got here, man. Thank you, bro. Very, very, very. I've been here a few times now, and yeah, yeah, yeah. every time I come, I'm like, wow, this is inspirational. Thank you, bro. But me, why do you need six, seven bedrooms, man? <laughs> <laughs> One guy. I like space, man. All right. I like space, and I'm thinking into the future, you know. If I decide to have more kids. True, true, true. true. So, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So, it's beautiful, man. A swimming pool, gym. I wouldn't even leave this place about you. Know what it, do you know what it was? I had promised my daughter a few years ago yeah. that I'm going to get her a house with a swimming pool. And so, literally, every few months, she'd be like, Daddy, have you got the house with a swimming pool yet? Oh, crazy. <laughs> Daddy, literally. Daddy yeah, yeah. So, naturally, this had to be the progression. And so, when I got this place, it was a surprise for her. Oh. And I brought her here, and she was so excited. She was running around the place. It was priceless. I can imagine, I, can imagine. I know exactly how that is because I've got yeah. four daughters myself. So I know. <laughs> Bro, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know myself, Jesus. Mama. I don't know myself, but um, it's this testament anyway to, to the kind of um, upbringing that we've had, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you are able to do this for her. Mm. So I want to delve into that, bro, because yeah. obviously there's, there's, there's been a journey yeah. for being able to be able to, to get here. And a lot of people nowadays may look, uh, some people that I know anyway, um, a lot of, we call them negative people, we can call them. They'll say, oh, this guy's lucky, or he was just fortunate, or he had better, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, opportunities than others. So, but just before we delve into that, Michael, I just want to discuss about you first and foremost. Obviously, you're a young guy, you know, you've made millions from a very young age. You've got so many companies. I believe you've got a media company. You've got um, a luxury private company, private jet charter, yeah. 
private jet. <laughs> private jet, you know. So this guy don't fly <laughs> commercial, you know. I do, I do. <laughs> So you still got to save money. Save money. Don't, <laughs> don't get high on your own supply, man. I, I, I sell yeah. my private jet time to okay. people who want to fly private. I am happy with business class. <laughs> business class. <laughs> I'm happy with it. I am I'm happy with commercial, bro. I'm good. <laughs> I, but that's definitely something I need. I want to experience, man. Private jets. So I'll give you yeah, a yeah, shout, yeah, see, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Um, so yeah, you got the private jet company. You got the media company as well. Um, I, I believe you got the, the chauffeuring business. That's right. I, and I then do a bit of crypto. There we I go. Do some property as well. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Oh, brilliant, man. Brilliant. So, this is you now. Mm. Let's. I want to go right back to the beginning. Where did it all start, bro? Where did it all start? Where did it all start? Mm. TV. TV. I dropped out of the age. I dropped out of med school at age nineteen. Med. Medical, medical school. school. Yeah, wow, yeah, wow, yeah. So, okay. you know, literally. Started being yeah. a doctor, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so one of the parents, like, doctor, yeah, engineer, <laughs> lawyer. Right, right. I'm Ghanaian, right? Yeah, yeah, As yeah. most Africans, yeah, yeah, when yeah. you're growing up, yeah. you can either be one of five things yeah. or a failure, right? You can either be a doctor, lawyer, accountant, teacher, or engineer, yeah. or a failure, right? And my uncle is a doctor, my older sister is a doctor, she's married to a doctor, my dad's an engineer, my, my mum's a nurse, so I was like, alright, cool, boom, I'm going to become a doctor, that's what I'm going to do. Oh. So I did that, went down that road, um, yeah. road got into King's College Med School, oh, wow. and I realised that, yo, I'm going to become one miserable doctor, that is not the path okay. that I, yeah, 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 from, I, but I knew anyway, from when I was finishing college, yeah. I knew that wasn't the path that I wanted to go down. Okay. Um, I knew I wanted to do something within music and the media at yeah. the time. I wasn't quite clear what it was that I wanted to do, mm. but I knew that it wasn't medicine. Okay. Right? Um, and so I dropped out at age 19, went home like, Mum, I'm not Is this from back. uni? You dropped yeah, out? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Said so mm. to Mum, I'm not going back. And of course, you can imagine the disappointment on her face. Michael! Yeah, literally. Ah. Listen, call the family meeting with all my uncles. Uh. I'm about to throw my life away. <laughs> <laughs> literally, you say that now, though. literally, right? right. <laughs> um, but it was it was a very interesting journey of you mm. know self discovery. I think that's always the first step. It's okay. it's always about self discovery. I mm. think we're living in this era now where everybody wants to be successful overnight, be successful straight away, yeah. make a lot of money. You know, post all these private jet pictures on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you are skipping the self discovery part, mm. which is figuring out who you are, yeah, who yeah. you are, what contributions you want to make. So well. Would you say that was a determining factor for you then? Absolutely. Once you found out who absolutely. you actually were. Absolutely. I, then your I, path. I, I, absolutely. Mm. So I, I managed to, um, after a few auditions, I managed to get onto TV. So I, I oh, wow. did a t I had a TV show yeah. that I produced from 2008 to 2013. You actually um, produced it? Yeah, I produced it. I hosted it. I executive produced it. <laughs> I did everything wow. for it. But it was brilliant. It was a brilliant experience. I got to learn a lot. Mm. Um, but what was what was crazy was as far as I, I was just having fun, mm. right? I was just having fun. It wasn't something that was paying me a lot, yeah. but it was starting to get popular on, on Sky and things like that. It was so yeah. embarrassing when people would see me on the bus. <laughs> um, but what that did was, even though I wasn't paid for it, for doing it, oh, wow. when I got to leave the network, yeah. I was able to take my IP with me. Okay. And so I, IP, <laughs> my intellectual property, okay. they, they, I, I owned the show. Okay. Right? Oh wow. Yeah. So I okay. Because you produced it and absolutely. Ah. Right. So I owned the show, and I wanted to in 2012. I wanted to get it syndicated globally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I managed to get it onto TV in Barbados and wow. Jamaica. Um, Grenada, South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, all of that. Wow. By the end of 2012, we were in 60 countries. So that's when I started to make with that show, with the show, with the show. Okay. So that's when I started to make some money. Yeah. Um, literally, I contacted all the biggest distributors here in the UK, mm. and nobody would touch my show. And so, literally, I picked up the phone myself okay. and started calling up broadcasters. Initiative. Yeah, yeah, no, Initiative. It's, it's essential. That's the most yeah. important thing. And literally, I was on the phone every day for three months. After three months, I got my first yes in Barbados. And for me, wow. all, I have I have one principle: if one person will say yes, mm. there are ten people out there who are going to say yes. Okay. If ten people are willing to say yes, there are a hundred people who are willing to say it's yes. True. So true. I got the one, and I just literally run with it. Yeah. And I'd literally call every, all their competitors in Jamaica, Grenada, um, Trinidad. Be like, listen, Barbados is taking it. <laughs> so you don't need to bear even, and that's really literally that's, how I got the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was the name of the show? 
The one to one shirt. Okay. The one to one shirt. Mm-hmm. So um, I did that, and then I realized that what I had created was a distribution network. Mm. I had now formed a relationship with all of these major broadcasters in different territories, yeah. and what I could then offer was a service to potential to upcoming um, producers and movie producers and series producers that, yo, if you can't get your show onto these networks, I can get them on there for you. Because you've had that relationship. So, now, right? so that was the birth of my distribution company. And literally in 2013, I came off TV because I realized I was making more money from the distribution. So I was like, nah, I'm not going to be on TV anymore. And literally that was the beginning of everything. Wow. And the rest has been history. Oh, wow. That yeah. is brilliant. It just shows you um, about using initiative. Um, and just taking that first step because a lot of people will say oh, I'm, I'm stuck I can't do this I can't do this when there's always something you can do there's always something you can do look mm. I don't know anybody who started from the top right mm. I don't know anybody who started anything with the amount of money they thought they needed to start with or yeah. with all of the contacts they thought they needed most people I know who have made it started with nothing yeah. it really what you have in a lot of the time we stand on those things as crutches to not make progress, mm, right? Because, oh yeah, yeah we love it. Yeah. It's because it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah. It's comfortable if you put yourself out there into an uncomfortable space, mm. you are now in the region of the unknown. Yeah. And people aren't comfortable in the unknown, mm. but it's in the unknown that the magic happens. Oh. Right? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, so true. absolutely. Yeah. Look, everything you know up until this point is the reason why your life is the way it is. Mm. It's because you keep going over the same thing year after year. Yeah. But if you would allow yourself to go into a space where you are in the unknown, yeah. where you don't know what's going to happen, that's really when you can create new possibilities. It's true. And, it's and true. that's what I that's what I took advantage of. That is brilliant, man. You I, know? Really, I really love that part about what you're talking about, about you actually... Putting in the graph and thinking, right, I can do something here. Absolutely. Instead of just sitting down and doing nothing, these people are not taking my, um, the show on. Yeah. I'm going to put it in my own hands. And now, pick up the phone. Now, and myself. we are the biggest distributor of black and faith based content. We are oh. their major, we are their direct competitors, these same distributors who wouldn't take out. And it all started. Take, and it all started. And, little little show. and, and yeah. what was crazy at the time is I remember in 2000 and. I think in 2010 or 11, yeah. at the time, I wanted to, you know, the TV wasn't making me as much, the, the, my show wasn't making me as much money, I wanted to work with Sky. Okay. And so, and Sky didn't take me, right? Mm. And literally, in 2013, mm. Sky were one of my first clients as a distributor. And wow. so, um, they rejected me for a job, as a, I think it was a pro- production coordinator or something like that. And it's actually forward. as an employee you went to okay. Yeah, yeah. But so now as a business, but now as a business, they wow. are they are one Look of the that. clients. So <laughs> that is amazing, yeah, bro. You know, that so. is amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, all right. I mean, you've touched on it already um, briefly. Um, I just wanted to you talk about your journey. So, were you? Did you ever have like a regular job to start with at all, or was it straight into? It's from med school, then you went straight into the media. I uh, so from med school, I had a job at the time. I was working at Phones for You. All oh, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was um, I was actually assistant manager at the Kingston branch. Oh, yeah. And so I left that job. Did that help you with anything though, in terms of sales? Yeah. It, it gave me. I I didn't really. I mean. I think I have always naturally had the gift of the gap anyway, yeah. but I learned some techniques and sales techniques from that job and, and just being able to cold call people yeah. um, that have served me till this day, right? Okay. Um, but I left that job to go into TV knowing I wasn't, you know, wow. TV wasn't going to pay me yeah. at the time, but I knew that it was the environment I wanted to be yeah, in yeah. because sometimes you have to put yourself in the environment that you want to be in yeah. so that you can learn as much as you can because when I was in that environment, I learned editing, I learned, mm. how, I learned how to operate cameras, I learned about lighting, I learned audio, I learned everything that, it, that I could possibly learn okay. so that I could become the best of what I could be in the field that I wanted to, in the, in the field that I wanted to go into. That makes sense. So makes sense. since first for you was my last job, yeah. essentially, and that was 2008. Wow. What yeah. were you now? 2021. 2021. So I haven't had a job for 13 years. And how does it feel? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It gets better and better. I, I can't. I can't. I'm not one of those. Things. I'm not cool with somebody telling me that I can make 50k a year, mm-hmm. or or 30k a year, or 100k a year. I, mm-hmm. I don't really like 
the idea of there being a cap on, on, on what I can earn. Yeah. I would rather have a zero commitment yeah. and know that the sky is, is the limit. Based on your work. Based, on, absolutely, based yeah. off of my efforts as opposed to, and listen, don't get me wrong, I can appreciate that it's not for everybody because there is a certain amount of stress and that comes with being responsible mm. for creating your own, you know, for putting food on your own table, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and as you continue to grow in business, now you are responsible for putting food on other people's tables. It's true. You know, your staff's children's ballet lessons and piano lessons is dependent on you. Mm. So that comes with an added level of stress, which I don't necessarily think everybody can handle. Yeah. And that's okay. It's not necessarily it's for not everybody. Yeah, yeah. But if it's, look, for me, I, I am... I am grateful for the life that I live, but if I had to go and sleep on my mum's couch tomorrow, it would make absolutely no difference to me. Mm. You know, I, I'm not I'm not attached to, to anything. Yeah. And so it allows me, it gives me the freedom and the it gives me the freedom um, and the fluidity yeah. to just be able to go with the flow and go where I feel yeah. I should be. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's so, beautiful, man. I love that. I love yeah. that, bro. Yeah. And just while you were going through that process of um, calling people and um, getting them on the phones. Was there any doubt in your mind at all at, at the time where, oh my goodness, what if these people don't take me or what if this, was, did that ever creep in? It's always a possibility, mm. but... And how did you handle it? Well, this is my thing. Mm. The only time something doesn't work is if you give up too soon, right? Yeah. I don't ever believe there is something that doesn't work. Wow, look at that, hear that people. Like, I don't care if you're baking bread. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Hope is, is a multi-millionaire from baking bread. It's true. King's Mill, they, he didn't invent anything new, you know? Yeah. He didn't invent the recipe for bread. His yeah. bread is not that special. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. It's true. King's Mill is not that special. Yeah. They bake bread, the same bread that our grandmothers have been baking from time immemorial. Mm. Right? Mm. So they didn't invent anything new. Yeah. They just found a new distribution structure mm. that allows them to be available in supermarkets all around the country, it's right? True. So for me, I know that absolutely th there, there are no bad ideas. There mm. are just bad execution plans, Oof. right? Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, there are no bad ideas, yeah. just bad executions. That's beautiful. Right? So if, you, if something didn't work, it's simply because you gave up too soon. Because mm. I don't care what it is, if you do it good enough, mm. for long enough, you will be successful. And that's the end of it. So I was prepared to be on the phone for 12 years, if that's what it took. Wow. Have you always had that mindset? Do you know what? Developed? Yeah. You know, it's like people ask me that a lot, but <clears throat> it's not automatic. Mm. I, I mean, now, obviously, there has been years of recalibration and transformation. So certain things come a little bit more naturally to me. Yeah. But on a daily basis, I make sure that when I wake up, I expose myself to a certain mm. kind of information I'm gonna get to that. Be before I even touch anything, before I look at social media, before I look on my phone, before I do anything. And I've been doing that since I was 18, wow. right? So it has been embedded in me. Mm. Like I am so stubborn when I believe I'm right about something <laughs> that I'm willing to die for it. Yeah. Like the doctors told me my, I was gonna have a daughter and I was like, no, nah, I'm having a son. <laughs> I went to the scan, they showed me the scan of my daughter. They're like, you're gonna have a girl. I'm like, nope, I'm having a boy. <laughs> That's how stubborn I am. <laughs> <laughs> Even when the girl came out, literally, oh, on the day, the bro, on, the up until the day she was born is the day that I accepted it. <laughs> so I, I'm just like that. I'm willing to die. That's a good thing, though. Yeah, it's not even if it's, it's a bad thing, but you can use it to your advantage. You can use it to your advantage. I'm willing to die for whatever it is that wow. I need. Mean, like, so <laughs> I'm powerful. willing to do it until it works. However, however long that is. Wow, that is beautiful. Yeah, no. I love that, bro. I love that. Just. Touching back on that journey, I'm going to take steps and then bring it to, to the now. Mm. We're just taking the journey now. Mm. Um, so, when you were doing all of that transitioning with your business and growing the business, did you ever come across any resistance, um, whether that be internally within yourself or externally from other people? Um, don't want to talk about a race car, but let's put it out there. If potentially, you came from across any of that externally. And turn internally yourself. Is there any resistance? There? I think the, the you know, I think the only thing that really matters is what happens internally. Yeah. I don't think. Look, whatever systems that be, mm. 
are, are they exist, yeah. right? Not for very good, right? But the the external systems are, isn't what controls your destiny. Mm. Your internal systems is what controls your destiny. Mm. I don't okay. pay too much attention with what the governments are doing or what white people, Asian people, whatever people, any kind of people are doing. Yeah. I simply have to control my internals. Yes. If my internal if my internal GPS is set to success mm. and I stay there. It really doesn't matter what anybody else is doing out. In fact, <clears throat> once that is set and you are so intentional about it, yeah. everything else will work together for what's... For, I feel like one of the reasons I have become so successful, even in aviation, as a young black man working in, within the private jet industry, yeah. is because I'm black. True, there we go. You use it as, as something that's... Because unique. everybody walks into the room and they're like, who is that guy? What is he doing here? Yeah. When in, a, in an environment full of old white men. Yeah. How did you get into that anyway? Let's talk about that. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I lived in Kent, yeah, and I had a I had a neighbour mm. who wanted to, you know, it's an old white lady who it's not the house it's not, before. It, it was not not that one, but okay. it was in Sittingbourne. All right. right. Um, so there was a lady who, you know. What, middle-aged white lady who wanted to get into private jet. You know, yeah. she had a rich husband who had passed away. Yeah. She 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 wanted to get into this stuff, but she wasn't really willing to do the work. Okay. She had the contacts, but she didn't have the drive. Okay. I had the drive. She uh, had the contacts. I was like, cool, no problem. Okay. So I, you know, we started together. I took her contacts. She got tired. I carried on, and wow. that's just what it was. Did she still ask for a little bit on the side, or was she completely out? <laughs> no, because I essentially built the business. I okay. built it. I grew it. Yeah. I've moved on with newer contacts and you know wow. stuff like that. We're still we still have a great relationship, but you know it, it was, that's just what it was. It was just seeing an opportunity and taking advantage of it, really. really. And and for me, this is my thing. If you don't if you don't approach everything mm. that somebody is trying to do you one over because of the wow, company, your race or whatever the case may be, yeah. you tend to become more attract. Look, I am a big believer in energy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And your energy is either attractive or it's repulsive. Mm. Right? And as long as you stay an attractive person, you draw people to you. Mm. So, yeah, I, you know, in the TV network that I started with, I was one of, I think, three black people wow. there. Yeah. But till this day, 12 years. Huh? You're one of the youngest. Yeah, people. I was the youngest. Wow. Yeah. But fast forward 12 years down the line, I still have a relationship with them. Mm. In fact, the, the son of the owner of, of the TV chem company was literally at my house like two weeks ago. Wow. We, have, we have kept that relationship mm. because I don't walk into any environment seeing limitation. Mm. If you see limitation, you experience limitation. Oh, you hear that? That's beautiful. It, literally. Yeah. You eat at the level of your vision. Mm. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Eat at the level you of eat your vision. You eat at the level of your vision. Wow. And my vision is never here on the grassroots thinking about the limitations. I'm always yeah. looking at what's up there. Yeah. You know. That's beautiful. And that's, that is, just shows you, as you mentioned about energy, how important it is. And it just shows you what sort of level you need to be thinking in terms of there is no limitation. There are none. Yeah, really, there isn't. Except what you choose to put. 100%. It's all up here. Yeah. It's all conceived yeah. in our mind, which Absolutely. is not actually real. Yes. But fear, what's, the, what's the acronym? A false expectations appearing real. Yeah. It's all false. Yeah. That is, bro, I love yeah. that, bro. I love yeah. that. Um, so, one thing I mentioned about you, bro, is since, ever since I've known you, we've known, known you for a few years now, mm-hmm. bro, and I swear I've never seen you upset <laughs> or angry. <laughs> Or, you, or negative or anything like that. I, swear, I mean, are you, do you ever get those? Do you know what somebody said to me? I've never day. seen this guy. <laughs> somebody said to me three days ago, he's like, bro, you're always floating. Like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what it is? Like I mentioned before, you know, it's not automatic. You have mm. to create a structure yes. um, that encourages and enables that form of living, mm. right? And so if you think about the average person, yeah that wakes up the first thing they do is they go through their emails they're looking on social media yeah. you're on shade room you're on shade bar you're on uk gossip you're looking at the people who died who shot who the police shot yeah. like by the time you oh, wake you up you are mad yeah. you are angry by the time you get out of bed you are pissed yeah. yeah that is not a recipe for a successful life mm. 
Right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying bury your head in the sun. I'm not saying you should bury your head in the sand. Yeah. But you need to create an infrastructure. Listen, what you put in is what you're going to get out. Mm -hmm. Right? And Ooh. so if you're starting your day with negativity, if this is the seed you're putting into the ground first thing in the morning, yeah. what kind of fruit do you think you're going to bear? It's true. Right? So I wake up, I don't look at my phone, I go into meditation first thing, make sure I'm calm, set my intentions for what I want. I take control of the day. Yeah. Right? I don't allow the world to take control of my day. Yeah. I take control of my day. I set the tone. I set the thermostat of where I want the temperature to be today. Hmm. Right? Preach. Once I've set the thermostat and I go out there, I'm fortified. You, my staff know you don't even call me before 10.30. Mm. You're getting a blast. If there's an emergency, call the police. <laughs> or call, call the ambulance. Don't call me. <laughs> No, honestly, yeah, this is genuinely how I live. Yes, and so before I interact with the world, with the yeah. outside world, I am fortified. I have taken the time, done my meditation, written down, I, I do scripting, so I write down what it is I intend to start, what I intend to accomplish mm. it, with, it, with each day. I do that. I have spent time with myself and I have built myself up. Yeah. Listen to one of my podcasts and do all of this. Brilliant, brilliant. Right. So by the time I start my day, yes. regardless of what comes, mm. I'm already prepared for it. Whew. I love that, and that's one of the things I was going to talk about actually further down the line um, on, on things we we're going to discuss. But you mentioned it already, so we can delve a little bit deeper on, into that. Because um, for me, what you mentioned is definitely, definitely, definitely something that I can 100% agree with. Because it's been a game changer for me. Because um, I do that as well. Just start my day right in terms of waking up early, I meditate, I read, um, and first thing first, I train as well. Mm -hmm. It's very, very good um, for more so for your mentality more mm -hmm. than anything else physically. Mm -hmm. And reading the books as well. So that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So you touched on it already. So, in terms of your a typical day, just break down the structure of what a typical day would be for like, when you wake up. Typical day, I'd usually wake up about 8 a.m. I'm mm -hmm. not really one of those 5 a.m. kind of people. Okay, you like me? Because <laughs> <That's not laughs> really, you know? I'm usually, I, I usually stay up till 2.30, 3 a.m. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Average part. So yeah, yeah. by 8 a.m. I'm up. Mm -hmm. um, I'd usually do my meditation. Mm -hmm. Do meditation for about 20 minutes. Okay. I'd go into reading for, yeah. a, for a little bit. Usually about, I'm always reading something. Yeah. So I'd usually really read for about 30 minutes. Maybe listen to a podcast do all of those things mm. then I go into script and I come down into my office so you have like a journal so I have a journal oh, so you write every day so I have a, I usually write most I'd say five out of seven days okay. five out of seven days I'll do I start with my gratitude list list of things I'm grateful for mm. and then I go into the things that I'm trying to create for the day wow. and by the time you do that you're already you're already in tune with yeah. like you know I've got this exercise which I do with some of my mentees mm. and I say to them listen I want you to imagine that five years have gone past mm. five years have gone past all your dreams have come true yeah. you're making the amount of money that you want to make you're living where you want to make you build the business that you want to build you're driving what you want to drive drive write that down mm. and, and and as soon as they start writing it down and I live here and I've made this kind of money and I just done this I went on this trip you can see immediately you start to feel excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that energy transfer. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's funny you say that. It's so important to write things down. Absolutely. It's so important to write yeah. down your goals. Because even when uh, I was doing a bit of research, I talked to one of my friends actually um, in regards to words and the power of them and the power of writing things down. That's why they call it spell. Because when you're spelling, you're actually casting out a spell out there. Well, when you say you're them. writing something, mm. it's a thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. After you've written it down, it's a thing, it's solid, you can touch it, you can feel it, <laughs> you can rub it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, for me, that's it, it's, I love to do that. I love to write things down because once it's written down for me, this is the seed format. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, this is how I welcome it into this realm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Once, would you say, when, if you hadn't written things down, you think you would have been where you are now if you hadn't written? Would you still have got where you are? It's hard to say. I'm not saying that you need to write it down to get it, but for me, I am a I am quite a spiritual person. Okay. I believe in I believe in sowing seeds. I believe in when I'm writing it down in my mind, that's my metaphorical seed that I'm putting into the ground of this realm. Mm -hmm. Right? And so once it's gone down on paper, it exists in this world. Wow. In seed format. That is strong. 
right? Um, and, and, and scripting is a very powerful. It's a very powerful thing, even what it does for you psychologically. Yeah. Because remember, all of this is psychological. Hmm. None of this is real. Wow, we're going deep now. We're going but, deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. None of this is real. Yeah. All of this exists in your world because you created it. It comes out of here. Hmm. Like none of this was given to me. It was created from from here. I experienced it in my world because I created it in my world, hmm. right? And so I am a big believer in taking full of. That's why I don't really like to make excuses for, for things. Yeah. Because if you're making excuses for things, look. If you are a creator, yeah, right, which we are, which we, which we are. The Bible is, says we were right? created in God's likeness. Right. He is a creator. Right. So you are a creator. Yeah. Everything in your life is exuding out of you. Mm. Right? In life, you don't get what you want, you get what you are. Mm. Right? So if I become, if I become the embodiment of absolutely everything that I want to see, touch, feel, and experience and have, yeah. then I can walk this earth and I can let simply let things flow out of me. Oof. Life is not happening to you, life is happening through oh. you. I like that. Not happening to you, happening it's through happening you. It's happening through you. Wow. Right? So the only time there is a block, the only time there's a disconnect between what you desire and what you're experiencing is you. There is a blockage here that needs to be removed. Yeah. The moment you remove resistance, mm. everything flows. Whew. Everything was created for us. Everything was created for our enjoyment. Mm. It's, it's not the birds who are going to live in these houses. <laughs> Even the, once again, touching on the Bible, it says, go and enjoy the, the world. This is it. Be merry, <laughs> you know? This is it. That is beautiful. So, I, I, I don't allow, I don't allow, welcome or nurture any limitations in my mind. Okay. And if, and if I, and if I did, I would immediately become aware of it and do something about it. Mm. You know? Let's talk about that, actually. How... How do you go about the process of it, um, taking out any negative talk? Because you have a lot of people nowadays that will think negatively or, or say, oh, but that's how I've always thought. Or I don't know how, how to get this negative thought out of my, my brain. How do you go about that process of when you think something negative? How do you... Right? You know the process that yeah. I just shared with you mm -hmm. about <coughs> excuse me, waking up. Okay, yeah. Given that, look. It sets you up. You, there can't be. I I can't nurture negativity. Mm. There is no soil in my. If you, anything you give attention to, whatever you give attention to, grows. Mm. You know, energy flows where attention goes. Yeah. Right. So if all I'm giving my attention to is positivity and what I'm trying to create, yeah. at what point, at what space does negativity creep creep in? Mm. It doesn't. Don't allow it to. No, it? it's not like I don't allow it to. There is no room for it to come. Hmm. Because you're feeling it so much. Because if I'm giving attention, if I'm going on there and going on to Shade Borough and all these places and I'm reading all the comments and I'm mad along with all these other people, thousands of people, yeah. that's when I'm taking on, that's when I'm connecting with this negative energy and doing all of that. Yeah. But if I have given my attention to something else, mm. something stronger, yeah. something more powerful, yeah. something more positive, mm. this is already the foundation. Those things can't penetrate that. Woof! This is beautiful. I love this. That's the reality. Yeah, it's true. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> people ask me that a lot. You know, you're always positive. You're always, yeah. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't happen by accident. Yeah, you purposely did it. You, you made it your, your goal. Basically, Absolutely. As you, you've intentional. It's, it's become part and parcel of me. Mm. I could not be negative even if I wanted to be. Wow. I've noticed that. Even when I, even when I have. Not a little mode, but I, we'll, we'll have a chat and we'll talk about oh, these things are going on. Like, no, I don't worry about it. It's this and that. <laughs> Mike is quick. You're just like, ah, oh, yeah. But at least it's this. At least it's a, a new positive. You always find a positive. Bro, thing, everything, you give, everything you give attention to magnifies. Yeah, it's true. Right? It's true. So what am I going to give it? If I'm, if, and it doesn't cost you any more energ en energetically. Yeah. Right? So if I'm going to give this much attention, to negativity and gonna allow it to grow, and yeah. give this much attention to positivity and gonna allow and it's gonna grow. Yeah. I mean, which one are you gonna give it to? It's just a lot of people are used to doing this. They're yeah. used to being on the negative end yeah. and complaining and talking about what Boris has done yeah. or talking about what's not going well. And look, if How, you, what would you sorry to call you? What would you suggest for people <clears> like that? How can they make that shift? Give your attention to something else. You know, one of the things that I learned from Mother Teresa, mm. the late Mother Teresa, right? Mm. She was 
we know she was the biggest advocate for peace yeah. that ever existed, right? Yeah. And she was never at an anti-war campaigns. She was never at any of these things. Mm. And a journalist asked her once, he said, you're, you, you know, you stand for peace, but you're never at any of these um, anti-ground campaigns, yeah. anti-war protests and all that. Yeah. She was like, listen, when you have a pro-peace campaign, give me a call. Uh. Because whatever you fight, mm. you create resistance. Whatever I fight, if I choose to fight something, yeah. I give it energy. Mm. If I choose to fight negativity, if I say, don't think about something, what do you think about? The thing that I told you not to think about. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Mm. Right? So if you don't want to do, if you don't want to, exp- if you don't want to feel bad, yeah. you simply need to change what you're giving your attention to. Mm. And if I'm in a bad mood, yo, I'll on some Kevin Hart. I'll listen to some comedy. I will completely change. You, the bad mood. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you, you just give your attention to something else. Yeah. And when you give your attention to something else, whatever you give your attention to will rise yeah. and whatever is in the background will diminish. That's beautiful. And it's as simple as that. Wow. That's powerful. You That's know? very powerful. I hope everyone's getting that. I hope you're taking notes, guys. Why? Wow. Beautiful, man. I love it. I love it, man. Just going back to your, your routine, you mentioned something about books. Now, you, you definitely read a few books. I mean, I've been doing that as well. That's helped me a lot in leaps and bounds. Just gaining that knowledge because um, success leaves clues, doesn't it? It leaves clues, and the best way to learn is through osmosis Absolutely. by being there. Somebody's already done it, already and learn off of them. Yeah, you know. So, in terms of books, what books would you say have been the game changer for you, or that really made it click for you to develop this mentality? Honestly, it's hard to say at this point because hmm. I've read so many books. There wow. isn't. I don't know if there is any. The only book that really comes to mind as opposed to business yeah. and changing my mind in terms of how I attract and deal with money mm. is by um, is a book called um, How to Get Rich by yeah. Felix Dennis. I've read that book. Yeah, it's an amazing book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Incredible book. Um, he has a very shrewd, no-nonsense approach to the yeah. acquisition of money. Yeah. And I think a balance is, a balance is necessary. He owned the magazine company. He owned the yeah, publishing yeah. company. Publishing company. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think in my in my in my earlier years, yeah. the books that really helped switch my mind and change the tone yeah. of my you know how I deal with energy, how I deal with money, mm-hmm. um, you know, think and grow rich is a, is a part. It's, I mean, you've probably heard a thousand other people talk about, talk it, yeah, about it, yeah. and yet most people haven't even read it. Yeah. And even if you have read it, trust me, I still read that book to this day. Wow. And every time I read it, I find something new. Mm-hmm. It's really like the Bible. Of the success, mm-hmm. yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean, yeah. and by Napoleon Hill. So that's one book that I would say completely, you know, mm. you know, do that. Um, I got my daughter to start reading um, Richest Man in Babylon the other yeah, day. That. That's, that's a brilliant book. book. You know, it book. changes your relationship yeah. with money. And puts I love this the, the, the way it's told as a story. The yes, story yes, yes, it's yes, 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 it's brilliant. Yeah. That's why I got it for for her because oh, I thought yeah. you know it's brilliant. It's a story, it's a and story. There's so many there. lessons. There's so many the lessons, yeah. so many lessons. Um, the Alchemist, you know, That's all, all of these well. books yeah. are, are brilliant. But I think those were the, I think as, after you read some of these fundamental books, I'm a big fan of Charles Harnell. Okay. Charles Harnell. So anything Charles Harnell, yeah. I usually delve into. What's some um, of these books? Um, Secret of the Masters of the Middle East. Wow. He wrote uh, The Art of, um, the art of positive thinking, like just a whole bunch of them. I've read most of his books. Okay. Um, anything, anything Charles Harnell is brilliant. Yeah. Um, some of that, and I, I'm a big fan of Abraham Hicks as well. All oh, right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read She's pretty much all about energy, She's and all vibration. About energy, vibration. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am heavy, 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 heavy on Abraham Hicks. Okay. So anything Abraham Hicks. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so true. Um, so you mentioned all the books that we need to delve into. Yes, sir. So, ooh, thank you very much, sir. Um, <laughs> start, gotta be start slurring words. <laughs> I've been slurring since the beginning. <laughs> oh, we love it. We love this combo. We love it. All, all the gems you're giving us, bro, man. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Um, yeah, just based on the books as well. Do you think without? reading the books you would have been where you are now do you think it's, it's, it's something that's helped tremendously would you have been where you are now without the books basically? it's not about the reading of the books it's about the recalibration of your mindset okay right and books is a tool so to books is that. just one tool okay. so i think 
more recently now, like I'm more into podcasts. Mm. I'm more into. I watch a lot of CEO interviews on YouTube. Like I find that C CEO. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I've noticed that like after you've read some of these books, yeah. they all tend to become repetitive. Mm. Um, and sometimes I can just watch one in, one interview of a CEO and cover as a lot of those yeah. I'm not saying that the books aren't important yeah. I'm just saying that they're not the only tool they're one yeah, of many one tools of you know whether it's podcasts yeah, yeah. whether it's attending seminars and doing conferences mm. whether it's signing up for, for mentorship yeah. you know yeah. lessons and boot camps and things like that mm. so the most important thing is you have to find a way yeah. to recalibrate your mind and mm. continue to expand your mind hmm. beautiful right because you you grow in proportion to the information that you consume. That's that's one of the things of yeah. the quotes that I love. Information changes situations. Hundred mm. percent. And we live in a world. Every where... problem is an ignorance problem. Mm. That's it. You simply don't know the answer to the problem you're saying you're facing. That's why it's a problem for you. Yeah. Somebody solved it. Oof. That's so true. And we live in a world nowadays where the internet is such a beautiful thing. A lot of people use it for the wrong reasons, unfortunately, yeah. but it's distraction. Mm. But we live in a world where information is readily Absolutely. Avail available. Absolutely. Even if you can't get to the books, you can go on the internet and Listen, search. You have more information at the tip of your fingers than we've ever had. Than the President of the United States did 40 wow. years ago. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, yeah. When you put that in context, yeah. it really does show. So there's absolutely nothing that there's absolutely nothing that you can't learn. Mm. But it's all about learning, and it's all about being intentional mm. about learning. True. Right. Mm. I call myself a student of life. I'm constantly learning, and I'm learning on purpose. That's what I've noticed about a lot of successful people. It's all never stop learning. Absolutely. Never, never stop. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go to school, go to uni, and then that's it. They don't do nothing else. When you stop learning, you stop growing. <laughs> And then you, you start being unhappy. Yeah. And humans, we're meant to grow. Yeah. We feel good and we, we yeah. feel fulfilled when we're Absolutely. growing. You're supposed to expand. Yeah. We're like a sponge. It's a, you can, you're, you're like a sponge. It's just as much, you can consume as much as you allow yourself to consume. Mm. I love right? the fact that you say you have to be intentional with it. Yes. A lot of people are not. Exactly, intentional a bit, exactly. and that's why they, you know, we a lot of people fall down and they start complaining and moaning. When really, as you mentioned, right here, absolutely, everything, you've got everything, yeah. you've got everything. <laughs> it's crazy. You, you, listen, I remember like one of the biggest things that I did is mm. when I used to, um, when I when I used to do a lot of commutes between yeah. um, home and the office. Yeah, I would do automobile university. Wow. I would be listening to. Podcasts, audiobooks, mm. literally rather than listening to music yeah. on my journeys, especially in the mornings, yeah. I'd just be consuming this stuff yeah, yeah. because it really does help set the tone and set the mood for how you're gonna, the day rest of your be. day and the rest of your week is going yeah. to pan out. If I have more information, I can do better. Mm. It's funny you say that because this all the things you're saying just resonate with me. So mm. I keep on this, sorry, mm. but it's just, mm. I could feed off of it yeah. because. Um, same, similar, when I was working, I used to have to drive yeah. to, I think it was Bromley I was working with. Yeah. Every day I'll have um, Les Brown, yes. motivation speaker yes. on all the time and that. So it, just, it just puts you in a different state. Absolutely, it really it's essential. Does. Yeah, it's essential. 100%. Yeah. And it gives you, as you said, it gives you that um, added boost. It sets your day up for the mm -hmm. day. I went in feeling a lot better. Yeah. You know, so those little things, guys, Just if you just change what you intake, will have a, 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 mag, a huge effect Absolutely. on your life in general. Absolutely. You are what you eat. Yeah. And what you see and what you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and when I say you are what you eat, mm. I don't just mean the food that you're, you're putting into yeah, your yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the TV you're consuming, mm. the blogs you're consuming, mm. you know, where people you're spending your time, the people you're spending your time around, mm. all of that. That all forms part of your diet. Mm. Right? Men. If you don't want, absolutely, yeah. you know, if you don't want to look slobby on the beach, <laughs> change what you're putting into your system, yeah. right? Sure. And so if you don't like the life that you're living, look at what you are consuming, look around you. Mm. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that, bro. <laughs> right, I'm going to touch quickly on, because you, you're a man of many talents. Um, <laughs> I know you, you play the piano. Yeah, I've, saw you, uh, I've seen a few times of clips that you show of playing mm. the piano. Mm. Beautiful. Where, where did that start? How did that start? Um, you know, when I was um, <laughs> when I was 16, mm. I started writing songs. 
Oh wow! Yeah, I started yeah. writing songs. I thought I was gonna be an R and B singer. <laughs> He's got a look for it, right? Look at this. Look at the truth. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah. <laughs> I quickly learned and, and I would write me. songs. Yeah, I thought I was gonna be a sweet boy. Right. <laughs> I thought I was gonna be an artist, you know. Wow. So I'd I'd write songs and yeah. I'd say to the musicians that they couldn't play the way that I wanted them to I was hearing the song. So I literally learned to play the guitar, I learned to play wow. drums, I learned I to play the guitar piano. as well. I play all of it. Wow. You know, so that I could play my own songs. Literally, and so that's Amazing. kind of how it started, and then um, it carried on to you know I grew up in church, so mm. I became music director in church. I'd be playing in church, so that kind of helped further my gift. And ah. Now I, I just use it for enjoyment. Oh, that's yeah, brilliant! Yeah, yeah. The reason why I touch on that is um, because I read a book recently called The Practice in Mind, mm. where this guy oh, I can't remember the name of author, but he mentions about where you have to fall in love with the actual process mm. of actually practicing. We live in a world where everything wants to be instant. Mm. Everything is instant. You, mm. you click on, a, on your phone, you get it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But learning to love the process of practicing mm. and taking that time to, to love it, that's where the juice is, as you say. That's where you, 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 you get to love the actual process of, of, of um, learning a new skill. Mm -hmm and then putting it into practice as well. Mm. So no, that's, that's brilliant, man. I didn't know you played the drums and all of that as yeah, well, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. With that, so obviously that took um, a certain sort of um, mindset and able to, to stick to that. So would you say that has always been in you in terms of like, look, I'm, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to stick to it till I learn it. Or is it something that you've developed through the books, the podcasts, etc.? Um. Because a lot of people, sorry to call you, but a lot of people say um, you are born with it or you're not. What's your take on it? Definitely, you know, everything can be learned. You know, mm. most of what we live on is a skill. Yeah. Right? And if it's a skill, then it can be learned, it can be developed. You know, what I would say to that, it boils down to passion. Okay. You know, if you're passionate about anything, mm. you'd be willing to spend the hours required to become better at it. Right? So, for me, I always start. That's why when people always say, should, "You know, should I follow? Should I follow the money, or should I follow the thing that I'm passionate about?" Mm. I always say, "Follow the thing that you're passionate about," yeah. because when you are passionate about, you can become the best at it. Because all of the time that you will spend practicing, you're doing it. You would be doing it for free anyway. Yeah, you'd be playing football anyway. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Get paid for it. But if you right. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you know, always always start from there and allow that to evolve. So, mm. when I was doing these things, I was simply doing things that I was passionate about. I would spend hours, mm. literally hours. And I remember when I first started learning to play the piano, I couldn't coordinate my left hand with my right hand at the same time. Yeah. Like, where you have to have, you could be playing something different on your left yeah. and something different in a completely different time. Yeah. It, it was a mind fuck for me. Yeah. It was literally <laughs> that. Like, I remember one night, I was sitting there till midnight, I was like, what the f I was almost in tears, because mm -hmm. I just couldn't get it to click. Mm. But suddenly, after a couple more hours that same night, wow. It was almost as if something just clicked. Yeah. And boom, it worked. And it hasn't yeah. changed since. Look at that. Right? Practice, so, practice, practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, excellent. the more that you practice, it's a... The more you are programming your subconscious mind. Once the, your subconscious mind gets a hold of anything, mm. that's why a lot of people struggle. Because they have had a very long... It works both ways. It, it works both ways. They have had a very long life of reprogramming their subconscious mind so negatively yeah. that that becomes its default position, mm. right? And so if you want to switch that, it is not one, one book or one sitting that is going to change that. It is going to be an intentional process of doing it on purpose, intentionally, painfully, every single day yeah. for a good two, three, however many months yeah. until that programming changes, mm. you know? So... That's what it boils down to. It comes down wow. to passion and allowing that to, to drive you. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. And yeah, it's true. And once again, with the practice, I always tell my girls then, as well that there's a saying out there that practice makes perfect. Mm. There's no such thing as perfect. Yeah. Practice makes excellent. Absolutely. So the more you practice anything, yes. the better you become. Absolutely. And you become excellent. And then 
You can charge a fee for it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's yeah. brilliant. But on the on the subject of practicing, so obviously it takes time. Mm. And you're a busy man. You've got your father, like myself, mm. you got all these businesses that you're running, etc. You do all this mindset stuff. How do you find the time to do it all, man? That's one of the people's excuses. You know, this is, <laughs> well, I don't do it all at the same time. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, but also, I stick to what I enjoy mm-hmm. and I stick to what I'm good at. Right? I am the man who can tell you that you're Mike, we're going to the moon. Mm. We're going to the moon, pack your bags, we're going. <laughs> I don't know how to build a spaceship, <laughs> I'm not an engineer, I can't tell you the distance between here and the moon, but we're going. <laughs> so I'm that guy, that's yeah. what I'm good at. I am mm. the big picture, visionary type of person. Mm. In terms of day-to-day management, in terms of staff, babysitting and all of that, I'm not good at I'm not good at that. Yeah. So I don't do that. Mm. I've stopped running any of my businesses. Oh, really? I've actually got people who are talented, who are gifted, who enjoy those things yeah. Yeah. to do that. Yeah. So I can be free to think up. That's why I can also expand so quickly yeah. because I can have the time to think about something else mm. other than being consumed by my business. A lot of people tend to want to become business people so they can have freedom, but then they tend to become self-employed and becoming consumed by their business, yeah. right? I, I made that mistake early on. I realized that actually, I don't enjoy the day-to-day. I don't enjoy doing all of those things. Yeah. And, and, and you know, finding staff, managing staff, babysitting, listening to their problems. I, I'm not, I, that, that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> Right? I want to be the big picture guy who says, listen, this is the grand dream. This is what we're going to build. I sell this dream to everybody on the team and the team runs with it, with the details. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And so that's what I'm gifted at. That's what I'm skilled at. So that's what I focus on. Mm-hmm. And so at some point throughout the journey, you're going to have to figure out the things that you are gifted at, yeah. the things that, that nice. you enjoy. Yeah. Because that's a big part of it. Yeah. If I'm going to have all of these things and this is going to become my life, I have to enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. Right, and so that's something that a lot of people have to do for themselves. Where you're like, yo, as you go along, figure out the things that you enjoy. Once you figure out those things, yeah. just focus on that. I simply focus on doing the big stuff and sales. I love sales. Yeah. I love selling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I simply focus on that. I think that's a major part, anyway, of um, business as a business owner. Mm. Sales and marketing is something that you should always have some sort of control yes. over. Mm. I don't think you should completely give it to somebody. Mm. Um, but in terms of, so thanks for that point, but in terms of that, how, because you said you made that same mistake initially when you were in the business, somebody who's self employed and in that position, how would you say that they make that shift? into stepping away from the business. Because a lot of people find it hard yeah. to let go, don't they? Yeah. How, how would you well, say Well, if you find it hard to let go, then maybe yeah. you're meant to be self-employed, right? Mm-hmm. But it depends yeah. on what it depends on what you want for your life. Yeah. It depends on what you want for yourself. Some people love the buzz mm-hmm. of waking up in the morning and being on the go and being in the office by 9 a.m. <laughs> getting that in, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. No, yeah. I'm not that guy. Yeah. I'm really not that guy. I like to wake up, scroll out of bed at 8, 9, 10 a.m. <laughs> if that's what I fancy. Yeah. Do everything on my own watch from 12 o'clock, I'm available to work. Mm. Right? Yeah. That's how I prefer to live my life. Beautiful. So it's it depends on how you want to do it. But if you are self-employed yeah. at the moment and you want to make a transition to becoming a business owner mm. where you can work on your business but not necessarily in your business, yeah. then you have to first of all start to take yourself out of the equation. Yeah. You have to start to create an infrastructure which does not which does not require you yeah. to be in, you know, when I first started in TV, all of these broadcasters had a relationship with me yeah. because I was the one on the TV, Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. if I'm calling them and saying that I've got something else for them to take, they trust it because they already know me, Mm. right? But as time went on, I had to start now bringing and introducing new team members to them so that they can start, absolutely, so they can start getting familiar with these other people and eventually there was no dealing with me at all. It's just dealing with everybody else. That's brilliant. You know, and and it's a transition, but it has to be, it has to be, it has to be intentional. Yeah, it has to be intentional, word, right? Sense. It has to be intentional, um, but also you've got to, a lot of people, I was speaking to somebody the other day, 
and she was like, oh, you know, I've, you know, I've got no staff. You know, these people, they don't, they're not hard working. Da, 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 da. I was like, well, that's one approach you can take. But if you do that, you're going to be stuck in a very, in that small position for a very long time mm-hmm. because it's, it's impossible for you to grow if you're doing everything by yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yes, when you bring, when you bring staff in. It's the cost that people think about. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, right. it's the cost, but it also it's the pain of dealing with people who are incompetent mm. and dealing with people who may not be as passionate as you. Yeah. But if you want to be a business owner, you have to suck it up yeah. and learn to train people. Yeah. It's like having kids. You have to. Sometimes you're gonna have to fire certain people, bring new people in. Who have <laughs> fire the kids. Yeah. yeah, fire them. If they're not good at to change what they're doing. <laughs> I don't condone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's yeah. just how you've got to do. You've got to be patient and nurture okay. these these staff in order for them to grow and, and to get, see your vision and to well. and to see yeah. the vision. Um, and, and so you've got to. It's because some a lot of people are so emotional mm. about their businesses, right? If you are emotional about your business, it is unlikely to grow mm. because you will not be willing to relinquish the responsibility to somebody else. Wow. That's a very important you know, point. so so that's what I'm that's why I'm saying that you've got to make a decision as to whether you want to be self-employed or yeah. a business owner. Yeah. If you want to be a business owner, I cannot have any emotion mm. entangled in my business. Yeah. I want it to do well. Yes, I love what I do, but me and my business are two different entities. Wow. And eventually, I have to create a structure where I can let the business go. Mm. Wow. That is powerful. You know? That is powerful. You see, you get these gems here, people. <laughs> I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> wow, gems. Oh, that is powerful. It's, 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 I've heard it before, but the way you put it is it's, it's, it's just brilliant. Mm. In terms of um, like just the way you explain it, how in order to grow, there's certain things you're going to have to let go of. Or certain things that you believe that you think you had to hold on to, and then actual things that you have to let go of in order yeah. to grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful, that's powerful. Release it. Love it, love it. <laughs> Ooh, to, moving forward now, bro. Um, so, business, all of these things going on, a lot of people say, where do you find the balance in terms of relationship with you guys, with your daughter <laughs> or the missus or whatever? Is it just straight business? Does something get sacrificed along the way? How do you find that balance? Or I, put, I don't really like the word balance. I like the word harmony. Yeah. How do you find the, the harmony of it? Well, harmony is a lifelong pursuit. Mm-hmm. But you've got to figure out what you live for. Do you live for your work or do you live for your life? Oof. You know, for me, <laughs> for, for me, yeah. business is, a, is there as a tool to make my life better. Wow. I build companies that can allow me to enjoy more time with my family. Mm. So if business is getting in the way of that, and don't get me wrong, in the beginning, it most, like, it most likely will. That's why you've got to have a very solid strategy. Mm. And that's why you've got to bring other people in. Yeah. <laughs> so that it's not all on you. Yeah. Right? Because I'm not here, I'm not I don't live to work. Yeah. <laughs> I work so that I can live. Oof. With life being the dominant factor. Yeah. yeah. Right? I wanna be on holiday, I wanna be travelling, I wanna be doing all of those things. I'll be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are the things yeah. that I hear you. And inspires me to build to build the businesses. So as long as I keep that at the forefront of my mind, mm. I don't allow myself to be consumed by the business. Mm. H- however, look, there are, there will be certain times of your life where one is going to have to take the lead. Yes, you know, yes. yeah, one will have to take the precedence yes. at a certain point in your life. Yes. Um, as long as you don't make that all of the points in your life. I have certain quarters of the year that I know are my peak seasons and all, all around I'm, I'm, I'm locked up. Mm. You know, you, you won't see me, we're not going out to dinner, we're not doing nothing yeah. for, for this season. And you know that. When well, you let that be known. I, I make that known, game. that's yeah. it. However, it may come summertime, and we have all summer. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, I can do everything, just not everything at the same time. Wow. That's amazing. You know I love that. So. I love that. Once again, the word that I think has jumped out a lot in this conversation is being intentional. Mm. Very everything. Absolutely. Wow. Where you where you fail to plan, where you you know where you fail to plan, your life everything just goes to shambles. It's true. You know. It's true. That's just what it. Ha- that's just what happens. Wow. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Whoa. 
Right, there's something that you mentioned before, bro, and um, you mentioned about um, growing up in a church yeah. and whatnot. I'm, I'm similar as well, growing up in as a Jehovah's Witness and Christianity, etc. Did you, I've found anyway, in terms of when it comes to building wealth or riches, was there any a clash there? For anybody? <laughs> now, <laughs> Did you ever have that clash? Now, said, that's a real question. That's a real one, bro. Because I've, I've it's, it's seen a lot of people make sly comments when you're talking about wealth and it's oh, but the riches, the Bible, whatnot. But when you look at all oh, many of the guys, um, people in the Bible, they're all wealthy, <laughs> rich. Job, Abraham, all of them. So, I just you want to touch on that really, really quickly. But I thought that was an interesting question. Boy, I tend to <laughs> stay away from this subject. But well, let's talk about it. So, I was raised I, 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 in a clash. Yeah. yeah. There, there was. So, let me give you the premise of where I am now so that I can mm. explain that better. I grew up in church. Yeah. I'm still a very big believer in God. Like I don't necessarily call myself a Christian mm-hmm. anymore. I. And I I understand and believe a lot of the statutes that were written in the Bible. But I realized at some point that there was an internal battle going on with me with being able to go out there and really pursue Mm. versus what I had grown up believing. And at one point, and at some point, one of it has to win. Mm. Um, Where if you grow up believing that money is the root of all evil, not that the Bible does say that, Um, but if you grow up believing... It's twisted to say that. Yes, it's, you know... But, but a lot of people feel very guilty, a lot of Christians, a lot of religious people feel very guilty about pursuing money mm. and giving time and attention and dedication to anything to do with that. Mm. And for me, that is, a, it's an impossible battle to win unless you break away from that. Mm. Um, for me, the battle is won or lost internally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You are, <laughs> you attract what you are. Yeah. And if, in, and if within you, you are already fighting the opposition of money that money is going to make you a more evil person or it's better for a it's easier for a poor man to enter the gates of heaven than to go through the eye of a camel and all of these things and these are the things that you cling on to mm. it will definitely have a, a, a an effect on you yeah. being able to attract the maximum amount of, of wealth that you can yeah. um, but I noticed for me around age 24 yeah. when I kind of broke that barrier mm. where I decided that actually this is not quite necessarily what it says yeah. but most importantly I don't necessarily want to live religiously anymore mm. I chose to question everything that I had been taught in my life and started creating these statutes for myself yeah. based off of what works for my life not what I had been told mm. not what I had been told by my culture my family yeah. religion any of those things yeah. um, I call them rules I broke a lot of those bullshit rules <laughs> you know because they were things that may not necessarily work for me yeah. but I had taken them on because they were saying this is how it's supposed to be yeah. Yeah. you know so, as you mentioned it's all about that reprogramming absolutely yeah. and, and between between 24 to, and to 26, I made my first million around the age of 26, wow. and yeah. I don't think I would have been able to free myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually to be able to make that transition and and, and truly accept mm. that this is what I want and it's okay. Yeah, yeah. God ain't mad at it. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And you know, having, so, having what is money anyway? It's it's, it's, it's a tool. energy. It's a tool. 100. It's That's just a tool. tool. Yeah. That's all it is. And a lot of people say uh, money can um, rich people they're greedy or they're this or they look down on, on rich people but I believe and what I've seen personally from knowing you yourself and other people that I know who's quite wealthy is that money only um, amplifies what you already are if you are somebody who's kind you're a dickhead, of you're just you just become that. Exactly. Money is nothing. It's you, just a tool. You just have another tool, yeah. a really powerful tool, exactly. to be a really big dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a generous person, yeah. this becomes a really good tool, tool. to become a very generous 100%. person. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. A lot of Christians and or religious people struggle with that with that fact that they're told that money is root or evil. Well, we live in an economic society, man. We didn't make the rules. <laughs> you you <laughs> need money to be yeah. able to get certain things, Absolutely. to travel, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it doesn't make you happy or unhappy. It's just a tool. It's just a tool. And to help you get Absolutely. Money. Yeah. And, and for me, I realized poor people couldn't really help anybody anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, that was not an aspiration. <laughs> I think Jay Z said it as well. Did he say, "How could I help the, the poor if I wanted if them?" If I wanted them, you know, <laughs> it doesn't help anybody. Exactly. So. If you kind, if you got that internally, your energy is, is someone that's warm, that's given, mm. and you want to give back. Money's just gonna enable you to exactly. do more of that. Exactly. You know. So. Exactly. Oh no, that's brilliant. Good, yeah. good. I'm glad. I'm glad. So, Mike, what are you currently involved in at the moment in terms of um, investments or um, work, etc.? I know you mentioned a few things that you're doing at the, at the, um, at the beginning with the aviation, um, property, etc. So, what what's now that you're really focusing on? I'm, I mean, now what I'm doing is restructuring my business. So. For the last, since I was 19, so mm. that's the past nearly 14 years, mm-hmm. I've always been in business, I've always had a business. Um, halfway along the way, I restructured my businesses so that I didn't have to actively work in them. Mm-hmm. Now I'm restructuring my businesses so that I don't have to have any businesses. Wow. Um, so that I can just focus on my investments. So are you selling off the businesses? Or? I'm selling them. Oh, wow. Um, for the most part, the next few years is mm. my plan. Um, because I have created other investment strategies, whether they be in crypto mm-hmm. and other things, and even property, yeah. where I can allow my investments. In fact, some of these investments that I've been making yeah. have been bringing me returns that can look after my lifestyle yeah. um, with that, with very little babysitting required, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. so over the next few years, that's what I'm doing. I'm literally focused on investments and letting my investments look after my lifestyle mm. so that I don't necessarily need to have the headache yeah. of looking after businesses. I guess that's another form of business, but not yeah. in a conventional way of having business in staff and all of those things. Mm. Um, I don't enjoy that anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just heavily on crypto at the moment. Yeah. I feel like that's our, you know, I went to this, I went to central London. I went to this lady's house in Knightsbridge. She's yeah. probably, mid 70s she okay. probably um the house is probably worth about five million at the moment yeah. she bought the house in 68 1968 yeah. for about eight thousand pounds wow right eight thousand pounds in 1968 well worth five million so the baby boomers you know after the world war they had the opportunity to buy a property for cheap yeah. and all of these properties are worth so much now yeah, yeah. um i feel like you know crypto is equivalent. crypto is the our is yeah. the equivalent for our generation yeah, yeah, yeah. um and over the last few years, I've been involved, I've been dabbling, um, but I'm just going even right, all in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember we, we had a combo, didn't we, yeah, yeah, on the yeah. phone before before this, yeah. where we talked about the crypto space. How yeah. I'm heavily involved yeah. in it as well. Um, so even if it's not on a grand scale as you can, you need to get something in, into the crypto because yeah, yeah. it's been the first time ever we've had this opportunity where something has come, a currency or asset has come from the other way around. Yeah. Normally it would be the banks and then Absolutely. it gets trickled down. Absolutely. But crypto has been peer to peer and then the yeah. banks are the last yeah, ones exactly. to get involved. Absolutely. So this is the opportunity this guys. If you're not into crypto or even trading yeah. as well on yeah. the markets, yeah. we implore you to do so guys. 100%, yeah, 100%. It's, it's, a, it's very important to allow your money to work for you. You know, yeah. I, I love the life that I live such that I don't have to be anywhere that I don't want to be. Wow. Right? Yeah, and I beautiful. want to, I intend to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so. Where I can be in any wherever. count, wherever. Yeah. I can go anywhere. And with this. And I'm, I'm connected. Crazy. I'm connected. I'm yeah. fully present. Mm. <laughs> wherever I want to be without actually physically having to be there. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what letting your money, that's what allowing your money to work for you yeah. gives you, it gives you a set it gives you the, the advantage to be able to still earn money. Hundred yeah. percent, I'm with you on that in terms of um, using your money to work for you. I mean, that's how the wealthy stay wealthy. And what a lot of people do, and which what I used to do back in the day as a consumer, is um, you earn your money and you spend it instead of earning your money, investing it. And then spending the return. Absolutely. The well, that's how people. That's how you get trapped. Mm. You know, I, I, um, I was told, you know, start a business or get a job that will make you so much money. <laughs> um, and I run with that. I, Why made, I made money. Like that? Well, because it doesn't benefit the system if everybody awakens to this truth. It's true. 
right? It's true. And, and even putting this information out there, unfortunately, not everybody is going to do it. Yeah. You know, the, a lot of people even know this theoretically, yeah. Yeah. but still don't practice it. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, I, I run with that. I went, became, you know, made my money and all of that, but I was still spending it. I was, my cars, my lifestyle, all of that was being paid for yeah. from my business. Wow. And until so I realized that actually you're doing this wrong. Mm. This is not what's even supposed at, to be. Even at that point where you can afford to do it, you realize. But it's not about, it's not about, this is the deceitful part. Mm. It's not about the affordability. Okay. Right, because if you're if you can afford it with your active income, yeah. you can't afford it yet. Your active income is your seed money. Mm-hmm. That's not your fruit money. Fruit. That's not the one you chop. That's what you put into the ground. Oh, that hit, man. Seed money, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, the money, you, money. No, wow. the money I'm you make that. from your job, yeah. your your business. Mm. That's not the one that you chop. That's what you put into the ground. No, 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 no. (laughs) because that's how you stay trapped. Mm. Because if you do that, if you do that, you will always, you would have to continue. Even if you want to take a year off, you wouldn't have a choice. But keep, you know, when you wake up in the house and the house is looking at you, like mortgage is coming out. (laughs) You don't want to live like that. You want to create a structure where you've got investments mm. where that is funding your lifestyle. And those investments, when you start making money, when you start having making money from business, career, all of that, mm. that's what you put in place. You put that into You put that into investments yeah. and then let your investments cover your lifestyle. Mm. Once you do that, then you truly have freedom because now I can do things that I really enjoy yeah. as opposed to doing things that I have to. I hope you guys are catching so, these gems, man. Like <laughs> this is exclusive, mate. <laughs> wow, no, that is that is just pure, pure facts, mm. real, real facts. And as you mentioned, these are things that people know. I've lived on both sides, and I know which ones are more enjoyable. Mm. I you never know? see where it's at. <laughs> you know. I know which one is more enjoyable. You know what I mean? What's the time now? It's a Tuesday. Six o'clock. Most people are still coming home from work. Well, COVID, the way they're working mm-hmm. from home, mm-hmm. and you're able to be able to just enjoy, relax, and it's essential. Yeah, it's essential mm-hmm. to to be able to put those structures in place, and it's not difficult. It's just that a lot of and, and you know, a lot of our generation are so fucked and mm-hmm. so e- so eager to spend all this money and show the world yeah. on Instagram yeah. that they're doing so well in life. With absolutely no foundation, Mm. right? Fuck all of that. Focus. Create a plan for your life where for the next five, ten years or whatever, whatever income you've got coming in, that's going into the ground. That's literally when you're getting your first bit of money, that's not fruit. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the seed. You put that into your ground and you let that bear fruit for you. Then you can really enjoy and be wherever you want to be, enjoy buying whatever you want to buy because you're not working for it. Yeah. Imagine, imagine driving your Lambo, not caring and worrying about the, the you know, paying for it. Yeah. And, and and it's not a matter of if you can afford it or not. Because if you can afford it from your job or your business, if that goes bust like that, your lifestyle is going to change. Mm. But if it's your investments, that's secured. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Would you say for? a lot of people who are slowly getting to this game now of cryptocurrency especially and investing a lot of people say I've heard a lot of people say oh it's a scam it's this it's that what what would you say to to those sort of people well it's definitely not a scam Mm. there are scams involved yeah there are scams involved (laughs) Um, so you have got to educate yourself 100% 100% information is key consume as much information as possible so that you can gain clarity and understanding of what it is that you're what it is that's going on Mm -hmm. um you know uh, in terms of getting new you know new people coming into the space just don't you know put all your money in it you know nothing certain yeah nothing is certain um go easy on it Mm -hmm. ease your way in you don't have to you know go all out just yet until you understand that Warren Buffett um quote 
don't don't test the waters with both feet. Yeah, yeah. don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know don't people get burnt from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as you said, it's definitely something. Easy your way in. Yeah, it's Easy definitely something in. that is when you just look at society at the moment. It's um, it's going digital. Yeah, everything is digital. Yeah, I'm Online. Sorry, it's gone digital. <laughs> there we go. It was going 20 years ago. Yeah. Now it's just gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now everything's online. Mm-hmm. We'll do everything online. Mm-hmm. No, currency is online now. Yeah, That's right. exactly Absolutely. what cryptocurrency is. So, um, no, yeah, we support you. We, we, you do have uh, educate yourself, as you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the game changer for me is getting that education. I joined yes. an academy where yes. um, I'm learning a lot more about yeah. it. I knew about it before anyway, but just actually paying for that information is, is leaps and bounds. It, 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 it puts you in a whole different and it's space. Because when Bitcoin went down the other day, yeah. loads of people were crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, cool. Yeah. I'll, sell, I'll, I'll go in on a sale and make money on trading. <laughs> that's the best time. Yeah, did you know we mean? love dips. Exactly. And like today, all the, the to are, most of, all the markets are up. I'm looking at even all my old, old coins today, yeah. and they're all up. And I'm like, this is fantastic. But I need to rise a lot. Yeah. So I need to go down. <laughs> what well, it is, it's a sale. I should look forward yeah, to the down. Absolutely. It's a sale. It's a absolutely. dip in the market. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, that comes through, as Michael said, through the education education from learning about it so I would definitely definitely implore you to do that guys and if you do want to learn about it, I'm going to leave a link just underneath this video here where you can actually learn a bit more about it and find out more um, so yeah Michael man thank you so much for your time pleasure, my brother pleasure. just before you go I know you probably heard this a lot of times and I know there's not one single thing that you can say that is um, uh, has contributed to all of this success but I'm gonna ask you that anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of people ask that. A lot of people want to know what would you say is the one thing. I know everything needs to be done anyway, um, as a collective. But what would you say has been a game changer for you to to get you to where you are today? Internal recalibration. Wow. What? Wow. Please say that again. Man. Yeah. Woo. But if you if you put it in context of what I said before, yeah. everything flows out of you. Mm. Right? So once you are internally recalibrated I love that the right man. way, See what I love this you guy. can get everything you want. <laughs> you can create everything you want. Beautiful. My brother. Pleasure, bro. You're a pleasure, man. Pleasure, my guy. Love you like cooked food, man. Come Tell on. me. <laughs> <laughs> Got me a bit tipsy as well, man. <laughs> but we're loving it. We're loving it. <laughs> Bro, bro, that's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. Appreciate it, man. You've actually got the same initials, man. M O M O. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's all love, my brother. But um, yeah, so where can we find you, man? We want to get more of this information. Where can we find you? I'm, bro? I'm on YouTube. Look up Sir Michael O. I've got my, my YouTube where I give out all of this information as well. I've got uh, my Instagram, Sir.Michael O as well. And so yeah, Twitter, Sir underscore Michael O. Find me. Find me. Connect with me. Listen, you need to connect with this guy, man. Mm-hmm. Trust me, he's, he's, he's done a lot of big things and he's still doing a lot of big things. Me and him have done a few things together as well and it's helped me 100%. And just guys, as we mentioned in this interview, just being around people who are where you want to be and just what I've noticed with a lot of um, people like Michael is that um, there's a certain mindset. There's no cheat code that people are looking for. It's just all that way is the same thing. It's your mindset, as you said. What was that? Recap, recap, internal recalibration. Oh, I love it. <laughs> internal recalibration. Ah, I'm just saying. <laughs> your tongue is too slippery. <laughs> I played this, but I love it. I love it. So, guys, please do that. Work on yourselves. Work on the internal because it always shows externally, guys. Guys, I, I, I love this. I love this. I hope you guys, please, please, please take to note what we've, we've said today. This guy knows what he's talking about. As you, you can see, he's built the success. He's done it for himself. But all of this really doesn't mean nothing. It all starts from in here. It's all internal, guys. So as, as we will say, guys, make sure, as always, man, you stay focused. You stay grinding. And make sure you subscribe, first and foremost. I'm going to be bringing you a lot more content like this. We're all about mindset, fitness, and health, and wealth. So let's make it happen, man. As always, make sure you take no days off. Peace.